We speak. We write. We, we do, do language. language. Hello, I'm Robert Morgan. I will read an excerpt from a story called Hurricane. The two main characters, Quentin and the unnamed narrator. The time is the depth of the Great Depression, and the two young men have been working with a crew building a road across the Everglades. After Quentin tries to organize a union among the crew, both are fired and told to get out of Florida. They have been assaulted by a deputy sheriff whom they hit and lock up in his truck. As they walk along the beach, a storm has hit and they are seeking shelter. The wind near the beach had been strong enough to knock us down, but that was nothing compared to the force that slammed us from behind as we staggered and stumbled farther into the woods. The air behind was a wall that pushed like a bulldozer blade. The sky roared so close I couldn't hear my own thoughts as I fell forward, still holding the jug, and Quentin gripped my belt. The air was a heavy ceiling pressing down, and trees and sticks and shingles whirled by. Rabbits and little birds went tumbling along the ground. I tried to stand up taller, but was knocked right down. Quentin said something, but I couldn't tell what it was. I crawled along the track, and wind pushed me over on my face, and I got a mouthful of sand. Whoa, I screamed, like I expected somebody to turn off the wind. Quentin slammed against me, and I heard him say, Oh, Jesus. I reckon he was praying, and I tried to pray, too. I prayed that if I'd done a lot of bad things, like running away from home and tying up the deputy, I would be forgiven. I prayed that a tree wouldn't fall and smash us. I prayed that we'd survive and get back to the highway, that I could catch a ride home. It was past time for me to be back home. The rain was so loud, my mind was all a mess. And raindrops blew out level as bullets from a rifle and stung my face and neck. Lightning bleached the air and woods, but wind was now so loud I didn't hear thunder anymore. I crawled forward on my knees and elbows and was pushed down and rolled over. A plank slammed against the tree and then went tumbling in over in. And then we fell into a kind of hole like a pit that had been hollowed out where sand had been dug. Sticks and leaves and pieces of trash lay on the bottom, but the wind was not so awful there. I pushed myself into the lowest part and found a snake among the litter. The snake was just a few inches from my face. I tried to jerk away, but Quentin was jammed against me. I couldn't back away and I couldn't go forward. I couldn't stand up in the deadly blast. With my free hand, I grabbed the snake and hurled it as far as I could. I thought it was a copperhead, but couldn't be sure. All the wind that had come before seemed like a breeze compared to what hit us now. The air pressed into my face so hard, I thought it was gonna break the skin and nose. I laid flat on the ground and worked my elbows into the sand. I pushed my face against the ground and felt wind tear and claw at my clothes and hair. There was something ancient and awful about the wind. It was like something I'd heard about long ago and forgotten. It was a howling from the beginning of the world, a scream from the stars and the stars of time, a howl of insanity and worlds breaking apart. The storm ro roared with a fury of 10 million freight trains going over our head. It was the authentic noise of chaos, of creation, the pain of birth, the cruelty and pain of people's lives. I buried my face in the sand and closed my eyes, for it seemed I heard the voice of evil itself, the lake of fire, the eternal damnation. Then I thought, yes, maybe this is the true voice of God and his wrath shouted down the hallways and lunatic corridors of time. Sticks and leaves and little animals fell on top of us. Rain soaked the floor of the hole and I felt water and bugs of all kinds swirling and crawling and scratching over me. But I didn't pay them much attention. The wind was so fast it seemed to make time stop and run backward. It was the roar of a fiery furnace. The world had started in fire, one of my school teachers had said. Or maybe the wind was so powerful it was rushing us ahead of time, speeding up toward the end of time, like the preachers talked about. 
I clutched the sand like I was afraid of being snatched away and waited and waited and rain soaked me and made a puddle around my face. I don't know when I realized the wind had slacked off. I was so used to the roar, I reckoned I was still hearing it in my mind long after it had stopped. I held on to the wet sand, hoping not to be sucked out of the ditch by the storm, and then slowly noticed the wind had quieted. Limbs and flying things no longer hit me. Rain sprinkled and pecked my back and tickled my neck and ears. The air was not pushing or clawing at me anymore. I raised my head and my face was not smacked down. I opened my eyes and saw the light had grown brighter. Where there had been woods before, there was nothing but knocked down trees. I looked over the rim of the hole. A few bushes stood in pools of water, but all around them was a mess of twisted trunks and limbs, a piece of what looked like a dock or pier tilted sideways in the sand. Far as I could see, there wasn't a thing but broke down trees and tangled vines and brush. It was a different world from what we had seen earlier. Quentin lay just as quiet as he had before. I guess he thought the wind was still pounding us. Get up, I hollered, and nudged him with my foot. Quentin raised his head, all covered with sand and twigs and leaves, then brushed off his cheek and looked around. It's the eye of the storm, he said. What do you mean? Quentin said hurricanes were just big circles of wind. He had seen a picture of a hurricane in a newspaper. At the center was a calm spot, but when that passed over, the storm would hit again, with wind coming from the opposite direction. It would feel like the storm passed on, and then it would come back. The lull would last only a few minutes. I thought I heard a voice yell, help! Quentin heard it too, for he turned around, and I saw the surprise on his face as he looked past me. I whirled to find what had startled him, and saw a big boat tilted sideways in the mess of brush and twisted trees. It was a long boat, nearly as tall as a house, with windows and railing around the deck. The front of the boat looked like it had been smashed against the tree. Help me, somebody called again.